This is TJ with Tech Made Easy. Welcome to the channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. And today we're going to go over a web interface for managing servers, Linux servers, that's called Cockpit. Now there are other web management applications out there, but Cockpit I think is one of the easiest ones to use, especially for the novice person and for the IT professional. And when I've, when I've seen Cockpit before, they kind of just touch on the surface of Cockpit but I'm going to introduce some modules that make Cockpit way more user-friendly, way more powerful, and also where we can manage and create and run our VMs on. If you haven't looked at Cockpit 4, now is the time, or if you have and you haven't seen some of the features of Cockpit that have been left out, and I'm not covering all of them, I'm just covering the ones that I think that are pertinent to me and maybe to some IT professionals, let's get started. Okay, before we get started with Cockpit, I just want to do some housekeeping here, it's, uh, some information. Uh, so what Cockpit is, it's a web interface for Linux, for managing Linux servers, but it's also very helpful for a home, a home user that ha wants a server and maybe it, it's in a storage room or it's back behind something and they want to have access to that all the time and manage their server. Um, it's very good for creating RAID arrays, uh, managing your VMs, uh, so on and so forth but there's a lot of power to it and a lot of things that people when I've seen cockpit actually demonstrated they lightly go over cockpit but there are some really cool things about cockpit that we're going to go over on this today now the purpose of this the presentation isn't to show how to install every single part of cockpit I'm going to have descriptions below um, that will help you install those either through the command line or if you're using a, 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 a GUI desktop of Linux through the GUI as well. Anyway, so um, I'm doing this on, I just did a presentation a couple weeks ago on this HP Mini server. It's a PC 800, uh, the a HP Mini 800 PC 4G. It's got six cores, 32 gigs of RAM. And then I, on top of that, because I wanted it to be a server, we went ahead, I went ahead and attached this Oracle five bay USB hard drive enclosure. And they are four terabytes each, so we're talking 20 terabytes of hard drive space that we're going to create a RAID RAID with, with Cockpit, and manage that. So, uh, some other things that are really helpful, especially if you're installing uh, Ubuntu server, um, you'll want to install NetTools, Git, Samba, uh, QEM, KVM, and Libvirt, and again, I'll have easy instructions on how to do that. We'll take a look at all the other modules, but again, I'm not going to show how to install all the modules. I'm going to leave links in there. The QEM, uh, KVM Libvirt link is is a link to um, Chris Titus. He has a very simple copy and paste. Install it, and it's good to go. And the reason why we're doing that is because Cockpit uses the QEM KVM uh, to uh, manage virtual machines. So let's go ahead, let's install Cockpit, and let's get going. Uh, Ubuntu server. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and type in sudo apt install cockpit. And when you do that, I've already installed it, so, um, but when you do that, it's going to ask you if you want to continue, hit yes, and it'll install cockpit. That's all there is to it. So let's go to the desktop and let's, uh, let's launch uh, Firefox and let's go ahead and go into this. And I've already gotten I've already gotten the IP, so you'll need the IP address of your server. And uh, actually, we can just look at that real quick here. And so mine is 192.168.122.227. So let's go ahead and jump on another desktop and let's uh, go ahead and launch Firefox and get into our Ubuntu server through our graphic interface, our web interface of Cockpit. Okay, now that we've installed Cockpit on our Ubuntu server, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears here, and I'm gonna do the rest of this demonstration using Linux Mint XFCE. Linux Mint is based on uh, Ubuntu, so everything that an Ubuntu server can do, you can do with Linux Mint as well. Um, and the reason why, um, some of the things I'm gonna do, it's just a little bit easier for me to to do in the GUI. Now, again, Cockpit is made so that you can manage your server from any desktop um, in your company or at your home but one of the things I would suggest if you're a home user 
and you're wanting to install an Ubuntu server and you're not real familiar with command lines and stuff like that, it might be easier to start off with something like Linux Mint XFCE that gives you a graphic interface. Um, but once you get that server set up, then you can set it aside and you can access it through um, through Cockpit. But I just think for a home user, especially for someone like me where I came you know, for 30 plus years I was using Windows and was used to a graphical interface. That's a little easier for me. But again, uh, so so I'm. <clears throat> this this video is twofold. It's to show uh, cockpit, how you can manage cockpit as an administrator, but how you can also uh, use cockpit as a home user and make uh, your your networking or your server easy. So from this point on, let's just go ahead and dive into. Uh, cockpit and again it, everything that I'm doing here the, the one thing that I will say um, that once once you have cockpit installed on Ubuntu and you go to a desktop and you launch cockpit um, you can do everything uh, I'll, I'll just go here we're gonna go into cockpit in a minute here but let's just go so once you're <clears throat> once you're on a desktop and you've launched cockpit everything you can do from the terminal here you don't have to add SSH into it so you install all of your modules from from the terminal here and it's direct goes directly onto your server um, so let's go ahead let's get started let's take a look at cockpit when it's meant as our Ubuntu server um, the IP address is going to be different because I installed it on Linux Mint as you can see here I've installed cockpit it says it's already been installed so what we need to do is we need to get our IP address for this Linux Mint server so we're going to go I have config and I'm going to be looking at 192.168.1.173. So that's how we're going to access cockpit from our from this server now. One of the other advantages is using the GUI, especially if you're not familiar with the clan line. Um, you can go ahead and some of the we're going to install some modules into cockpit and a lot of those modules you can just download as a dev file. And then you just double click on them, and then it'll give you. I know I've already installed this, so it just says reinstall. It says install and reinstall. So you don't have to go to the command line. Again, I'm just. <clears throat> uh, the, the purpose of my channel is to make things as easy as possible, especially for those that, uh, that aren't admins or that aren't uh, specialized in IT. Go into uh, cockpit. What I want to just show here, um, especially um, because we're using uh, the desktop of, of Linux Mint. We can use the store manager and we can actually look up cockpit here and we can uh, install it here. Even though we installed it um, manually on the Ubuntu server, if you're using something like Linux Mint, um, you can go into the software manager and install it from there. One of the things that we are going to be using this time, and again, I, again I'm going to have all the, uh, the links how to do this through the command line or, or or going in and downloading a dev file and installing from a dev file. But while I'm in here, um, what I want to show you here, you, you have uh, Cockpit Machines. I'm going to install that. And what Machines allows you to do, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can manage your and create virtual machines um, using QEM, KVM. I'm going to install uh, Podman. And uh, what it is, is Podman is their module. They basically they've gone with podman instead of docker but again you can install docker and so on and so forth so i just want to show you um you can do all these all these you can do through the command line i'm just doing them here now that now we are going to have install some stuff from the command line but i'm not going to again this isn't how to install i really want to show the features of cockpit and not just take the time on how to install it all so once you have cockpit installed on your server whether that's ubuntu or whatever server it is all you have to do is just put in your IP address as the IP address of mine, and then you're going to do a colon, and you're going to do 9090, and uh, you're just going to hit advance, and you're just going to accept the risk. Um, and so now we're just going to put on our username. And this is what cockpit will look like. Um, when you first log in, uh, when you first log in, once it's asking if you want to turn administration access, of course we do. So, um, so then what will happen is, is you'll, you'll, these are the features that will be there except for Podman and Virtual Machine.
general information about your system here. Uh, you can do more details if you want. Um, and then, uh, so what we're going to do though is, is let's go to storage for a minute here, and it's going to show all my drives. And so what I do um, is I have a, a USB five bay enclosure where I have five hard drives in here, and, and we're going to create a RAID with it. But I don't want to create a RAID using the Linux format. I want to use I want to use a uh, ZFS. And so we're going to go ahead and install ZFS. And again, I'm not going to show how to install all of the apps here. The, all the links are going to be in there. But that's the last thing that I'll probably go to the command line for uh, to show how to do that. And so we need to copy this. And we're going to grab that. After we grab that file, and then we have to put in that command. And... And now we have to re we'll refresh this and we'll have ZFS here. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to leave all these here, configure it. Before I start creating that pool, I'm just going to go up here, click down on this, and it's going to say configure um, ZFS. Sometimes if you're having a problem, if it gives you an error creating the pool, just go in here and just hit configure. Don't change anything. I had a problem doing that, and I just went into this to hit that. I don't know why it made a difference, but then um, I didn't, wasn't getting any errors creating my pool. So let's go ahead and create this. Um, I'm going to call this uh, M Store, and we're going to do a RAID Z1, which is RAID 5, and you can do RAID 6, RAID 10 in here. Um, we're going to choose our drives here really quick, and. So I've got five uh, four terabyte drives. One of them is an eight terabyte, but it'll force it into that, for, force it to eight terabyte or four terabyte. Um, so then uh, the sector size, it will it will look at your sector and it'll choose the right one, or you can set it to auto detect. It'll do the same thing. Um, these down here, automatic replace drive, that's if you have an extra bay in your server. Uh, and so if a drive goes bad, it automatically takes uh, over the new drive and, get, and lets you know that that drive is compromised. Um, so um, we're not going to do that. Auto trim, we're going to force uh, the pool. Uh, we'll talk about Samba here in a minute. So let's just create the pool. And this is what I really like. You can manage your ZFS in here. And then we're going to see here that we have um, almost <clears throat> a little bit over 18 terabytes of hard drive space with our new uh, RAID 5 pool or RAID Z1. And then we go down here and you can see here that with the with the RAID 5 um, because it's going to take a disk for a redundancy we really have about 14 and a half of hard drive space available so now what we can do here we can check the status of our hard drives of this uh, RAID array that we just checked and here's our hard drives to the to the right everything's online if there if, if we started seeing denigration there would be a message here but if we wanted to change a hard drive let's say this hard drive was going out it's really easy all you have to do is just take it offline put in a new hard drive once you got the new hard drive in you say replace and and we'll, that new hard drive will show up it'll show up here and you can say replace and it'll it'll then be replaced into the RAID array it's that that easy to replace a bad hard drive so you can also do snapshots in here just create a snapshot and there you go it's a great tool now, one thing that I'm going to talk about here is Samba shares. I'm not going to enable this right now. Um, and so, but what we are going to do now that we've created this, um, it would it we need to go to Navigator. And again, the links are going to be below on how to install the Navigator's an extra module. So let's go to Navigator real quick. And the one cool thing about Navigator is um, <clears throat> this allows you to upload files in here, copy files up. Um, and manage files here through a little web browser. Um, it does have a dark mode if you want to do that here. Um, it has a list view so you can list and things nice about this list view. You can see all of your permissions here um, but let's just go ahead I'm going to go ahead and go back to folder view here and I'm just going to click on uh, M store here and I'm going to edit this. I don't want it to be root. I'm going to change it to my username and so let's just do that real quick and then I'm just going to give the group rewrite and we're going to go ahead and save this okay so um, one of the things I will say 
Um, and I don't know. This is a this is the one thing about a cockpit that is I have not figured out yet. And I will leave links. Forty five Drive has made this file share here. Um, and but for some reason I can't get it to work. Um, but I'll leave the link to their their video where they go over but they go over file sharing. They're the ones that wrote this module here. This you'll notice here it's 45 drive. And even in the ZFF pool, if you go in here and you enable Sama shares and you give it a name and even if you just make it anonymous, um, you can get into it, but you can't you can't edit it. You can't create a folder or anything like that. It treats it as read only, and I don't know why. So the easiest way to do that, to get around that with Samba Shares, um, unfortunately, um, we'll just go through the, the browser here really quick, and we're just going to go to System, um, and it, the Samba is in in this uh, etc folder. We're going to open this up as root, and again, you can do this through the uh, through the command line. I, I I just do things through the GUI, and we're just going to click on Samba here and in our Samba share here we're going to go ahead and we're going, to, we're going to put in here at the very bottom you don't have to get rid of any of that stuff at the very bottom we're just going to go down here and we're just going to go ahead and paste in a share here so it's M store their path I'm just calling it M store right here yes we can read a read only is no that means we can read I'm allowing guests. I'm putting my username there. But it doesn't matter. I'm making it brow browsable. We go ahead and hit save here. So after we save that in here, we need to go to the terminal and we will just want to uh, go ahead and restart the Samba service. And again, all this will be in the description below. And then as we go here to the file manager, we should be able to browse the network. We should be able to see that folder there. And, and we can just connect because we, we made it. So anybody can get in here, we can create a folder now, and now we have a folder. Um, so that's a, I found that's the easiest way. I wish I could do shares within Cockpit. I just haven't figured it out. If somebody knows, they can leave a message or leave uh, a comment on how to get that to work. But I haven't been able to get it to work on either way through the ZFF shares or th through this file share that 45 Drive has created. And the, the nice thing about this though, if you can get it to work, it will do NFS shares as well. Um, so now, let's go back to Navigator really quick. And what we can do while we're in here, if we want, we can go ahead, and I created a folder there. I'm just gonna delete that, say yes. We're gonna create a new folder here. We can call it test. And then our folder here, we can create a new file. And I'm just going to call it text. And we can open this in a text editor through here as well. So we can uh, put some stuff in here. And we're going to go ahead and save this. Okay, there's two things I'm going to go over really quick here, and one is containers. It does have Podman that uses to manage containers, but obviously you don't have to use Podman when you want. You can install Docker a container, and you can manage it through a GUI through Pertainer or Kubernetes, um, or you can use Podman. The other exciting thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about um, the virtual machines. So I have four virtual machines here, as you saw, I'm running Windows 11. Uh, right now it's running. I'm running KDE in the background, and that's one reason why when you saw here uh, a lot of memory is being used in the CPU um, because I'm running those uh, right now. So let's just go back over here. And so installing installing a, a, a VM is great. It, you can download it, or you can just go to your local choose your path uh, wherever your your local uh, ISO is. So when, really quick, when you put in your path. To, when you choose your ISO, it'll automatically recognize that it's Windows 11 and it'll grab that operating system for you. But there is a list of a whole bunch of operating systems. If it doesn't come up, um, you may have to choose from the list as well. Um, and then you just uh, you, you can go ahead and choose your hard drive size, your memory. You can choose all that. Just hit create and it will go. I will say this much though about Windows 11 it would not start the install for some reason. 
when I installed KDE, uh, Ubuntu server uh, was fine. And I can't remember if Windows 10 was the same way, but but uh, what I had to do is I had to go to um, I had to go to the Vert Manager. And this is one thing about uh, when you're running uh, virtual machines here, it does use KVM, QEM to to do it. So I would ins I would suggest installing that first, and then install it's it. It installs when you install the, the virtual machine module of Cockpit. It does install that, but I would install it first just so you really have this. Because what I had to do is um, I had to go in here and I had to start the install um, in here. Once it was starting, then then I could go um, back to uh, the interface. And and it went and it installed while it was it was installing within here. Uh, once I hit the install there, I don't know why it, it has that. That's kind of a buggy thing with installing Windows 11 or Windows 10. I can't remember if I did it with both of them now. Um, but uh, anyway, it works great. The one thing that I would recommend is when you're in this mode, this screen this screen here isn't the, the most efficient. You can expand it. Um, and it's a little bit more efficient when you expand this, um, but um, one thing I did notice with with Windows 11 is um, let me go back here really quick. Uh, it's better if you just go ahead and do a desktop view, um, launch the viewer, and and this is the, the this this then is way more efficient um, in running Windows 10 and Windows 11 in this viewer. Now when you're running um, something like, say, uh, I'm just going to close this real quick. Let's go back here. We'll, uh, we're just going to go to KDE. When you're running KDE and you hit this expand, uh, it actually works pretty efficiently. For some reason it just doesn't like to do it in, in, in with Windows. But you can do the same thing here. Um, you can go ahead and uh, let's go back here. You, you can uh, launch the desktop viewer here as well and again it's going to be really efficient doing that it works really well um, so it's it's kind of exciting that you can uh, manage your virtual machines here um, install them like I said the only one I had to go to the vert manager for to install to start the install um, I so and oh, I, I need to back up for a minute here too. Let's go ahead and look. So when I created this, uh, when I created that virtual machine using Cockpit, it went ahead and put all this stuff in here. Put the TPM2 in there. Put all this stuff in there. I didn't have to choose any of it. It just knew it just knew what to choose. So you can customize some of this stuff through Cockpit, but if you if you're going to customize it, you probably you probably would want to go to the vert manager and customize it. It's a little bit, a little bit more easier. But set it up, manage, and run them from here. Uh, it's great. It's great. So that covers uh, Podman and uh, virtual machines. Awesome utility here. Okay. So once you've created your virtual machine, before you run it, you can edit a few uh, options in here as well. So you can edit your CPUs here. You can edit your memory again if you want to. Um, and there's other options to edit here. Anyway, so that, that's just a quick overview of, of virtual machines and Cockpit. Okay, here I am at my Windows desktop. That's the beauty of Cockpit. It's just made so that you can manage your server from any desktop that you're at, wherever there's a browser. So let's just go ahead and go into that. And we're doing our 192.168.1.173. Uh, semicolon, our colon 9090 is our server IP address. So we'll just click on that. Let's just go ahead and log in. And that. so everything we were doing on the other desktop, we can do here as well. We can go ahead and manage our ZFF pools if we want to. Um, you got your pod, your, your pod man containers, your virtual machines, everything we were doing before. One thing I do want to show you in here is uh, let's say in, while we're in here, we want to let's go back one here. And we're in our M store directory here. We can see all those files that we put in before. But let's say I want to upload a file to there. I can go in here and I'm just going to upload this file here. And there it is. Um, but we don't really have to do it that way either. 
um, we can, since we're on this desktop here, I can take this file here, I think this is 200 megabytes, and just drag it on top of there, and you'll notice down here uh, where my mouse cursor is, that it's uploading that file to here. So, again, you can, you, this just allows you to manage your server, um, just like just like I was doing before. Everything from from my Windows desktop that I did on my Linux desktop, I can do from here. This is a great tool for managing your server. It just makes things easy. Um, if I want, I can go to the, the terminal. Again, I don't have to SSH into this server. Um, I can just do everything from here. So now that we've got this set up, or now that we're in here um, on my Windows desktop, I also want to connect to that M Store drive. And so we want, what we want to do here is we'll just put in our drive, our server, that 192.168.1.173. Get that there. Here's our M Store server, our drive. We're going to go ahead and map this. And there we have our drive mapped. So, and then if we want to copy a file over, boom, we'll just replace this. So let's just go ahead and copy this file over. This is about 200 megabytes, and then there we go. So um, now I, now because we created that Samba share, I can now uh, have access to that server uh, through my personal desktop as well, just like any other server. Um, so that's it for the desktop here. Let's go back and review cockpit. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick summary. Uh, so we have our overview here. And then, of course, we do have logs that I haven't talked about that you can go into and take a look at. Uh, we talked about storage. We've, made, we've created a ZFS pool. You, there's also networking controls in here that you can do as well. Uh, we talked about uh, containers, virtual machines, obviously. And we talked about, oh, one thing I haven't talked about is if you want to give somebody else access to this server, you can just go ahead and put their name and password in here, and then they can have pass access to the server as well um, to maintain it. Um, there are services. We talked about Navigator. And yeah, let's just go up here to our root directory. Then we talked about uh, Samba and file sharing. That that's one thing uh, disappointing for me with this is I haven't been able to get it to work through the GUI. But I showed an easy way to, get, to create a file share through Samba. And then one of the things here is, is it, the applications are basically, these are all the things that we put in here. Storage is one of the applications. But when you, when you install Cockpit from the command line, all of those things that I showed you um, through the software store when we install the Cockpit get installed uh, with the exception of Podman machines. Uh, but storage gets installed automatically that allows you to manipulate your hard drives um, so one of the other things that also too that i need to mention that will be in the links below is um, sensors is another module and then at the sensor you can go ahead and check the temperatures of your cpu uh, your drives now one of the things i can't look at right now uh, temperature wise is i can't look at those five hard drives and that's because when you use a USB uh, and you're accessing a hard drive, Linux cannot see the temperature. Uh, they can't access that USB controller to see the temperature of your hard drives. So that's the one disadvantage of using uh, this uh, USB enclosure that I have. But um, it still works for networking, it still works. You'll still be able to get your ZFS uh, messages if you if uh, hard drive starts to downgrade. Uh, it's just that uh, I just won't be able to see the temperatures on my hard drives. But uh, so sensors is another module that you can put in, and like I said, I'll have the link down below. Okay, so <clears throat> quick overview. One thing I, that I do want to mention here, really quick, is um, I just want to show you something uh, quickly here, and that is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and delete this folder here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this in here. And this folder has, I don't know, what do we have here? Uh, it's, it's got 18 items, 16 uh, gigabytes. We're just going to go ahead and copy it in here to our, our uh, Z pool that we created. And what you're going to notice is how fast this is going. Um, that's because um, I bought a uh, five 
five gigabyte network USB adapter uh, for this lap for this mini PC. So I'm just testing it out. But one thing you're going to notice it's going to slow down here. It's not because of the of the US. It's not because of the USB network adapter. It's just that um, this five bay enclosure. Uh, it it's not it's controller card and um, the hard drives just can't keep up with the speed. Um, if I was doing if I was copying this say when we were in Windows and I'm using a one gigabit uh, card, uh, it wouldn't experience this. But when you throw a lot of speed at this, and this is just this doesn't have anything to do with cockpit. Um, I I'm I'm just I'm just giving. It's just something interesting because I wanted I wanted to test some network cards with this mini PC or not network cards but USB network adapters and uh, uh, but this is one thing I found out is that it's slow but as far as reading goes it reads really really quick and so uh, this folder here that I've been copying some files from this is actually my uh, video server. Now my video server is 10 gigabit. Um, it's really robust. I have lots of RAM. I think I have 128 gigs of RAM, and so when it's run, running ZFS as well. And so when we go ahead and uh, we'll we'll copy this folder over here. One thing you're going to notice is how fast. Now I'm only using a 5 gigabit um, USB network card, but look at the speeds here, and I don't know why. And now again, my server is a gigabit, uh, is 10 gigabit. Um, so I don't know why it transfers so fast, um, and it'll slow down kind of at the end. Um, but it's real. But as far as the disclose, the enclosure goes, the reads are really fast on that enclosure. It's just writing to it. Um, it it's just not. It's just not. It can't keep up if you're going to write really big files and use, uh, say, a two and a half or five gig. Uh, network adapter with it. So I just thought that I would show you that's just something interesting um, that I was messing around with as I was creating this. Uh, but I just hope that uh, and, and there's there's more modules for I don't know everything about cockpit and obviously I'm not an administrator and so some of the things that administrator may do with it may differ from me as a home user. Um, but there are more modules I can't even name I don't even know all the modules that you can get for it um, but these are the ones that are most important to me uh, especially the virtual machines because I do run virtual machines on another server and I know that there are there are a few people out there that they are <clears throat> they are taking their Proxmox server and dumping it and using cockpit and using the virtual machines management in cockpit uh, which I find kind of interesting but anyway, um, I hope this was helpful. And again, I'm doing this. I, I, I did this server on, on Linux Mint. Uh, again, I showed you how to install it on Ubuntu, though. It's the same thing. Uh, again, this Linux Mint uh, desktop, uh, Linux Mint uses Ubuntu as their base. So everything I did here, you can do in Ubuntu, so on and so forth. But this is TJ with Tech Mint Easy. I hope that was helpful and enlightening. Have a great day. Thanks. Now that was easy.